Welcome to today's webinar. We are going to be talking about the allocation accounts in GP. My name is Jessica Myers. I work for Maynard and I've been working for Maynard since about October, but I've been in the GP world for about seven to eight years now. I started off as an end user and then transitioned to being a, a consultant. So allocation accounts, what are they? They are breakout accounts, meaning amounts posted to one account gets broken out to several accounts. It can be used anywhere in GP that you would post, such as journal entries, accounts payable, invoice entries, sales invoice entries, payroll. Those are just a few examples, but anywhere you post in GP, they can be used. Why do people use allocation accounts? A lot of people use allocation accounts to get a higher level of detail in your general ledger while allowing users to use one account when they're entering payables invoices or other transactions such as that. They're, the efficiency, it's much qu quicker, as I was saying, and easier to enter and post one account versus that several account breakout that are in allocation accounts. Where are they located? They are located under cards to financial. If you click on the navigation pane for financial, you'll go to your cards menu and then go to financial and you'll see variable allocation and fixed allocation accounts. The kinds of allocation accounts that are available are fixed allocation accounts, which distribute fixed percentages of a transaction to several listed accounts. Variable allocation accounts, which utilize unit or posting accounts to create the percentage calculation versus in fixed allocations, there's a fixed percentage. What do fixed allocation accounts look like in GP? As you can see on the screen here, a fixed allocate, this is an example of a utilities expense. That first account that you see, the 000-6190-00, is our main account. That's the account we will be using to enter on our payables invoices or anywhere else within GP. The distribution, as you can see below, are the fixed allocation accounts that we want to spread it out. So for example, all of these departments, we want to spread out the utilities expense. Now this has to total up to 100%. And as you can see in the screen that it totals at the very bottom of 100%. To set up fixed allocation accounts, you have to open the fixed allocation maintenance window by going to cards, financial, fixed allocation. As I was saying, you enter a single account to use in the data entry as the main account number. And then you list out your distribution accounts, which are broken out below. For variable allocation accounts, again, you have the one general account number at the top. The difference here, though, is that it can be based on a year to date, a total, or the transactional period total. You list your distribution accounts below just like we did before, the different departments. The additional step though, is you have to do a breakout account. So whether it's based on a unit account or posting accounts or a combination of both, it takes those breakdown accounts and calculates the percentage. To set up variable allocation accounts, you again go to carts, financial, variable allocation. You again enter a single account to use as the main account entry. You use your distribution accounts. And then you enter your breakdown accounts. As I was saying, the balances of the breakdown accounts will determine the percentage that will be posted to each distribution account. People generally use the unit accounts, which are also known as statistical accounts, but others will use posting accounts. So what are variable allocations? Variable allocations allow you to distribute transactions based on additional factors. They could be the number of employees, a physical size of a department, or you could base it on your sales and expenses. Characteristics of all allocation accounts, they will never hold a balance. They're just the pass-through accounts, which is why the main account number 
that you create, the 000 for our example, that main account number will just be entered. And then once you post, which we will get to in a little bit, we'll show the breakdown of all the accounts. They, as I was saying before, fixed allocations must always add up to 100%. And there's no limit as to how many accounts to allocate to. Fixed allocations will always have to add up to 100%. So if you have 100 different breakout accounts, you just have to make sure that the percentages total to 100. A little bit about unit accounts. Unit accounts are used in statistical account or used for variable allocations. However, other people use it in financial reporting. So even though you might not use it for variable allocations, you could still use it in as statistical reporting in Management Reporter or any of your other financial reporting platforms. Common examples of what people use unit accounts for are the number of employee, so the head count, the number of embeds, which is common for hospitals and hotels, number of meals served, common with restaurants, the number of passengers, which are the airlines, the percentage of revenue per month, percentage of year-to-date revenue. Again, these will vary across different organizations, but are very common to use for many people. So how to use these fixed and variable allocation accounts within GP? I know my screen is a little small, but we will go over to GP in just a few moments. You open up your transaction entry that you plan to enter this on. When you click on your distributions, you will enter the actual GL account, that single line there. Now, if you try to print your batch edit list in payables or any other module, you won't be able to see the breakdown of the distributions. It's only on the GL side that you see the breakout on the GL. So as you notice here, here's the breakout between my different departments. And as you saw on the payable screen, it was just a single line, the 000 618000. Now we are going to hop over to GP so that you can further see and understand where this is located. So I open up GP here. When you log into GP, you normally go into the home screen landing page. Let's pop over to the financial navigation pane. And then if you notice up above, under cards, financial, you have unit accounts, which again are the statistical accounts, the variable allocation account, and then our fixed allocation accounts. Let's look at our fixed allocation. And this is an example that was created that we created for you. You'll see the first line is our general account number that we're going to be using when we're entering information. We put a, a description and an alias. And then listed below are our distribution accounts with their percentages. The level of posting from the series allows you to control whether you want to actually have it in each module or if you want to have it only specific to a certain area. We would encourage you to use the detail because that's what a lot of people, or that's one of the main reasons people use it, is to keep it at a detail level versus when you look at a summary level, it's more, it's just that one line that you see on the GL. All right, for variable allocations, if we go to the variable allocation here, Again, you have your account number as just your general account number, a description, an alias. The, the additional screens that we have are our base on date, our base on types, which are year to date or transactional period. So year to date will take a accumulation of everything through that period. The transaction period will just focus on, for example, if you're posting an April transaction, it will just focus on the transaction that were posted in April. 
And then below here, you choose, which you can use your magnifying glass to choose your lookup for your, dis your distribution accounts. But once you enter a distribution account or click on it, you will then notice that our breakdown account will also populate. So our breakdown account, again, could be statistical or posting accounts. And if you click your look up, look up again, you'll be able to see all your accounts listed here. I want to touch on what unit accounts look like. So if we go over to a unit account, unit accounts, again, could be anything for any organization. For the Fabricant Company, it is, again, number of telephones or any of our options that we have here. Square footage, employee headcount, even fixed asset information. So if we look at our square footage for administration, I have entered a journal entry. It's always one-sided for unit accounts. That goes through, and as you can see here, I entered it in one period, and that's going to just carry through until I make a change for another period. All right, let's pop over to our purchasing module or payables as many people use it. We're going to go ahead and go to our transaction entry window. And we're going to enter just a general transaction. I like to save my transactions to a batch. So I'm just going to create a test batch. We'll save it. We'll go ahead and choose a vendor. We'll enter our document number. So just common stuff that you do every time you enter a transaction. You enter the total purchases. This is the, the time that you determine what account you want to enter it to. So now let's click on our distributions button. And this is already defaulted to use my allocation account. However, if I wanted to change it, I could change it at this time. So the purchase one will always be your allocation account, that single account that you created. So I'll just go ahead and I'll use this one for the moment. And we'll go ahead and save this transaction. And we'll go ahead and we'll post it. Again, if we reviewed this batch, which we'll go ahead and do right now, our transaction edit list here. Notice how you don't see the breakout. Again, this is at the payables level, so the payables level will have just that single account listed. So if we go ahead and post this transaction, we'll just post all our journals to our screen so we can review them. So here's our first one, our Payables Transaction Posting Journal, which is the one we just looked at for our batch edit list. Here is that distribution detail. Again, it only shows on this payable breakdown, the one line. Same with our GL distribution summary for payables. But getting over to our general ledger posting journal, you now see that allocation breakout. So if we were to go look at this journal 3454 on the payables or on the general ledger side, we see the transactional detail. And if we click on our source document, our hyperlink here, it'll take us back to that original transaction. And then look at our distributions and we see that single account listed. Now let's use our other allocation account type. So back at our transaction entry window for payables, we'll use that same vendor. And we'll use a different amount. Click on our distributions again, change this to 6190, which is our other allocation account type. We'll save it to a batch. And we'll go ahead and post this batch also. Okay. 
and we'll look at all of our printouts again, which as you can see here, you on the Payables Transaction Posting Journal, again, it's that one allocation line. Same with our distribution breakdown register. And our summary for payables distribution. But on our, again, on our general ledger posting journal, so on our GL side, you see that it breaks it down to those allocations. And that's how you use the breakout of the fixed allocations and variable allocations. We'll be happy to go through even more training or further discuss utilizing the allocation accounts with you. You could submit a support request at MainerSolutions.com. I appreciate everyone for joining that joint. Uh, I know it was kind of a quick webinar, but it's definitely a great tool that comes with GP. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. It, it's just a matter of planning and getting things set up. And we're always happy to help you guys uh, figure out how to fully utilize your GP system. So we really appreciate it.